What is happening, M0A Nation? Jason here, welcome back into this awesome five-part flight maneuver series. Last week was steep turns, links to that below if you haven't watched part one. Part two is today, we're talking slow flight. Slow flight in the clean configuration, then slow flight in the dirty or landing configuration, meaning with flaps out. Remember what the ACS says. A lot of my, my old timers, and I myself am an old timer, we used to do slow flight where we hang it by the stall warning horn. We don't do that anymore. In fact, the private pilot ACS says to discontinue if that were to happen. So at the first sign of a stall, right, that could be buffeting, sloppy controls, or a stall warning horn, you have to discontinue. So the goal is to get as close to the first sign of a stall without actually setting that off. Let's start in the clean configuration here. So once again, it's all about the foundation, getting a strong start. So nicely trimmed up. I'm at almost 3,500 feet, about 40 feet low from my 3,500 feet. But everything else is looking really, really good here. Nice, strong configuration. Let's start with slow flight in the clean configuration. By the way, my clear turns are already done. But I'm going to stick my head out just one more time. Everything looks good. In our aircraft, we have a carburetor. So carburetor, heat, carburetor heat's going to come on. And I'm going to bring the power on back to almost like a run-up RPM. For us, that's about 18, 17, 1800. I pitch for airspeed. I power for altitude. Here's a common student pilot error, and we're all student pilots. You want to bring back the nose right away. Well, you do that, you're going to end up climbing. So instead, you bring the power back, slow down level straight ahead, and then adjust to get the speed down a little bit. Then adjust, and the controls are going to start to get heavy. You have two options. You can sit here and try to fight it, or you can utilize some trim. I just gave it like two just throws of the trim. No, no science behind it, like we did with the steep turns. Just trying to loosen it up a little bit. I'm still at that. Uh, I'm still. Whoopsies. I'm still at that uh, 1700. That that uh, run up kind of RPM here. All is looking good, and I am right about my 67 where I want to be, roughly. 65 I might push it to, because about 60, that slow warning horn's going to go off. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. You built a strong foundation in level flight. Why not build a strong foundation in slow flight as well? I got a little bit of a sink right now. What should I do? I pitch for airspeed. I power for altitude. Give it some power. Just hold it here. You should be able to go hands-free. Now, here's what's going to happen. The check right examiner... Your instructor, whoever, is going to ask you to do turns. Your ailerons are, look at this. We're, if we were flying the airplane normally, we'd be all over the place, right? There's hardly any airflow in our wings. Let's turn back around to west. Left turn west, clear left. You have to baby your way through the turn. It's a little bit of footwork. It's a little bit of aileron. The maneuver is called what? The maneuver is called slow flight. Take your time. It doesn't say you have to do it in a certain amount of time. It doesn't say a certain amount of bank you have to make. It doesn't say any of those things. It just says turns to headings. It also says climbs and descents, too, which I find very interesting. It doesn't get practice a whole lot. All right. I got a little bit of a climb going, which is actually good. I could use that. Sometimes the turn, you have to give it just a millimeter or more of power. I realize that's not a scientific RPM setting, but you know what I mean. I'm hands-free. I'm using a lot of my feet. I'm keeping the aircraft coordinated as we continue to come around, all the way around to west. Everything is great. Going to get that pretty sunset coming into view in a second. Awesome. Look at that. Coming around. All right, I'm, I'm just going to use the sun. That's my rollout point. That's west enough for me. And I roll out using a little bit of rudder, a little bit of aileron. Awesome. How do I recover? Very simply. However, don't forget this. You're still being graded in the recovery. The maneuver's not over once they say recover. You're still being graded. So watch this. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. This is a common mistake. I used a lot of trim to hold this for me. A common mistake is to do this. Carb heat full power and not be ready for that. See how the nose comes up? Now I gotta fight, 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 fight. Look at that, 500 feet per minute. I am gonna blow my maneuver 
and I still got a lot of trim to take out here. So now I got to take all that trim back out. You need to be ready for that and anticipate that. Now, don't trim up for level flight just yet. You got full power in. Build up your speed. Then get your power back to your cruise power setting. About 2,300 RPMs for us, and then trim again. Now, what about slow flight in the dirty or landing configuration? Same little procedure here. And you're practicing, you're getting better, not only for landing, slow flight help with landings, but you're getting better better as well for your stall recoveries. The procedures are very, very similar. Carb heat's going to come on. Power's going to come back. Again, I'm doing about a run-up RPM. And you have two options here. Baby in the flaps or dump in the flaps. It's up to you. I'm going to baby them in because I think that's the best way to do it. I've shown videos in the past. I've just dumped them in. There goes 10 degrees. Remember, flaps have a tendency to make the nose come up. Now, with my previous... Uh, Oh, exaggeration of the recovery, we're around 30, actually we're like 35, 80, somewhere around there. Dump it in altitude-wise, what I'm talking about. Next notch of flaps. Next notch of flaps. Here come full flaps. I will not need as much trim in this configuration here. All right, we're holding that 35, 80. Watch it. You're going to need to add power, perhaps. If you get back within the green arc, you could even turn carb heat off at some hot days in the summer with a big instructor and, and yourself, right? You, you might be out of the green arc. It's just me today, so if I had someone here with me, that's possible. All right. Ooh, I'm losing altitude. I'm busy over here talking to you. Give it some power, Jason. Give it some power. Give it some power. Lower that nose a little bit. I'm a hair slower than I'd like to be, but no warnings or anything like that. I'm car feet's coming off. I am in the green arc now. I'm trimming the nose down, believe it or not. Now I got it stabilized. Nope, not quite. You should be able to fly just with two fingers or certainly hands-free. A lot of power, so I've got some right rudder in there. Slow flight in the dirty or landing configuration. How do I recover? just like I would a power off stall, which is next week's videos, so don't miss those. Car beat comes in, full power, may have to push forward, flaps go right to 20. This is it for 2-3 Mike Zulu, you gotta check your aircraft's POH. Right to 20, through 70, and we're talking speed, flaps go to 10. Positive rate of climb, flaps up and out. Got, need some trim. Back to cruise power setting. And life is good at Missouri Nation. Slow flight. Why do we practice slow flight? We practice slow flight to actually get better at landings. Before you land, when those controls are sloppy, by the way, you want to try the same thing with cruise power? A little bit different, right? We practice slow flight to get better at landings. At Missouri Nation, you all are the oxygen to what we do. We truly view you all as family. I love your comments. Leave us comments down below this video. Can't wait to see what you're up to. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you.